This episode is sponsored by AG1. I've got a tough job ahead of me today. Let me show you what I mean. This maple has been dying for a couple years now. As you can see, it's uncomfortably close to the cabin. To make things worse, it's also leaning slightly over the cabin. As it stands, I have two options. Let the tree continue to rot, where it will eventually fall on its own, probably onto the cabin. Or I bring it down today, using my chainsaw and felling wedges to direct its descent. Ideally, I like to fell the tree directly away from the cabin, but the nearby stand of cedars has blocked that route. Really, the only place that I can drop the maple without causing damage to the roof or surrounding trees is to fell it alongside the cabin. With a tree that's already biased toward the cabin, my margin for error is slim. It's far from ideal, but it's the only option I've got. I'd like to take a moment to thank AG1 for sponsoring this episode. AG1 is a daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. Lately, I've been drinking it in place of my morning coffee because it supports sustained energy throughout the day without the caffeine crash I get from coffee. AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. Prebiotics, probiotics, basically everything I need to support body, brain, and gut health. With one scoop, I'm receiving a broad spectrum of micronutrients and phytonutrients to keep my body nourished all day, every day. I've been taking AG1 for a couple years now, and I feel so much better for it. As for the taste, my daughter says that it's like gummy bears and the green part of watermelon. Although I'm not sure that's exactly how I describe it, I do agree that it tastes less green and more sweet than it appears. If you'd like to try AG1 for yourself, click the link in the description below, or scan the QR code in the bottom left to get a one-year supply of vitamin D3 K2, plus five travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Before dropping the maple, I first need to determine exactly where it should land. Taking my axe, I measure the handle against my arm and hold it where they are the same length to each other. Then, holding the handle perpendicular to my arm, I slowly back up until the tree appears equal in height to my axe handle. By doing this, I've roughly triangulated where the top of the tree will land, which is where I'm standing now. To prove my point, I set a GoPro camera a couple feet back from the target. If I'm correct, the maple will fall just short of hitting the camera. If I can fell the tree to this exact spot, I'll avoid damaging the surrounding cedars. What happens next sent a chill down my spine.
Without having time to set the wedges or complete the back cut, the maple began to pop and creak. Is the trunk so rotten that it's already beginning to let go? I quickly scan the top of the tree for movement, or if there were any cracks running up the trunk, which would indicate the beginnings of a barber chair. I didn't see anything, but the horrible popping and creaking persisted. I removed my earmuffs so that I could get a bearing on the sound. That's when I realized, to my great relief, that it wasn't coming from the maple at all, but from a nearby cedar. Trees will often pop and creak in the cold, but due to its timing, the cedar had given me a good scare. Okay, let's get this maple down. I quickly set my wedges and prepared to release the back cut. Right on target. From the tip of the tree to the camera is 34 inches just under three feet. I figured this maple would have some good spalting throughout the grain, so I took a 10-foot section over to the sawmill to make some live-edge lumber.
falls well, that ends well. The maple tree came down exactly where I wanted it to. And that's despite the little scare I had with the popping and creaking sound, which ended up coming from the cedar tree behind me. But for a second there, I thought that the, the maple was beginning to barber chair on me. And since it was leaning slightly over the cabin, if it let go on me, it would have fallen onto the roof likely. But uh, thank goodness the tree fell exactly where I wanted it to without any issues. So I took the bottom 10 foot section of trunk, brought it over to the sawmill and I cut it up into the live edge lumber, which you saw. Anyway, I cut up the rest of the tree into firewood. So that's taken care of. And I'm just taking a moment to warm up by the fire and collect my thoughts and have some hot chocolate here in my, my Bass Pro uh, steel cup. Oh, I'm just getting over a bad cold, so I'm I'm trying to take it easy and not work too hard. <clears throat> uh, that's mainly why I'm taking the break here. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, after this, I'm going to jump in the snowcat and head over to the pop-up cabin. I've got some business to take care of there, so. ago my dad and I built a small cabin which served as an outpost while we worked on a larger log cabin. We designed it to be easy to transport and quick to assemble, affectionately referring to it as the pop-up cabin. For those who are interested, a set of plans for the pop-up cabin are available on my Teespring account. I've included a link in the description below. The small outpost served us well for several years until the main cabin was more established. These four walls hold many special memories for me, but the time has come to dismantle the outpost and move it elsewhere. Perfect, thanks.
maple syrup season is just about here, which I'm looking forward to with my family. After that, building season will begin again, and I believe a good front porch is in order. Stay tuned. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless.